Reaching the boundary of the Glenelgan flower farm, you would be forgiven for thinking you had crossed an invisible line from the dry, dusty basalt country in central Queensland to the lush gardens for trade in the lost flowers of Alice Hart. What Anna Nicholson, along with her husband Gil, have created on their remote central Queensland property is nothing short of inspirational, not just for their glorious garden, but to see just what can be achieved with a bit of passion, hard work and thinking outside the box. Anna supplies commercial flowers throughout her region and delights in creating beautiful bouquets and backdrops for everything from weddings to country races. Anna, thank you so much for joining me today and thank you for the tour of your amazing garden and I think this has been the top of my bucket list for some time to drive down here to have a look through what you've done here. It's just spectacular. So tell me how it all started. So where did it grow, grow from? <laughs> well, growing up, my mum was always a big gardener, I guess, and my grandmother's both spent a lot of time doing it so I was always inclined to get into gardening I guess. One day I guess I picked up a book and it was for Florit Farm. She's a cut flower grower in the USA and yeah I become hooked. I, it started out with dahlias. I saw how beautiful her fields were. They were all different colours and yeah I took it to a mum's group and I was showing my friends and yeah from then on in I just spent head first and yeah, the passion grew and I started growing about 100 dahlias initially and then from there I just fell in love with the flowers and yeah, the, I guess the passion grew from there. So you grew up in the bush, didn't you, Anna? So, and not far from Gill, am I right? Like, yeah, 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 so just half an hour down the road. Yeah. Um, yeah, just on a station and... Mum and Dad always did a lot of veggie gardening, I guess, and, yeah, I learned a fair bit doing that as a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonder you didn't get turned off, have you? We, yeah. I was talking to a friend yesterday about, um, you know, as a young person, I didn't particularly like gardening, and I think, you know, my kids shake in their boots when I say the hedging needs to be done at home, and it's something you grow into, do you think, as you... Yeah. Get on. Although I guess some people, like you, when you're younger, have a passion for it too. Yeah, definitely. And I think once you become a mother as well, you're technically kind of house down where your kids are. But we all know that children love being outside and they're usually happiest when they're outside. And then you get the whole new problem of getting them to eat their vegetables. So, yeah, vegetable gardening was where I started and... Yeah, just easy to just duck out and get that mental break from being in the house all day, just digging in the dirt and, yeah, it's therapeutic. Yeah. So, Anna, when you came up with this brilliant idea of starting a flower farm, how did you go about telling Gillum? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just started doing it and then I needed some more cow manure, so... Um, he got roped into that, but when I took on, uh, you know, the wedding that I did recently, that was when Gil kind of realised <laughs> what he was in for. <laughs> he wasn't really too um, too sure how he was going to help me do it initially, but I assured him it would be fine, and yeah, we were pulled through and we grew. Oh, there'd have to be thousands of flowers and. Thankfully, I did a lot of research, getting all the right blooming dates. Um, you know, there's certain ones you have to pre-sprout and soak them. So, yeah, thankfully, he, yeah, he's very supportive. <laughs> um, Anna, just talking about that, like walking through with you, you have so much knowledge about what the flowers are and when they, you know, what you should be planting when and how they, you know, what they do. And um, so that was all just learned it, it you know you didn't go to university or anything to learn horticultural it's all stuff that you taught yourself is that right yeah that's right i i'm a big book reader so i spent a lot of money buying gardening cut flower books um soil health books you name the type of book i, I have it i yeah i study them all the time and 
there was a few people in the community that were kind enough to give me books and support me and yeah I just love it because instead of doing a course which I'll probably do eventually but it's good just to have that knowledge on hand so when you, you get stuck on something you can go back and look it up and you've got it there yes yeah. and I imagine there were quite a number of hurdles that you had to get over in your own mind because when you did that no one's ever done you know had a flower farm before it's, yeah. it's not known for its flower it's not a flower farming region flower region um so you would have had to have a lot of faith in in what you were learning so how difficult was that to get over um you know the n- not coming from an area that farmed and yeah. starting something that was new to the area. Yeah, very challenging. There is one other girl, um, Emily Springs, so she's just out of Claremont. Mm-hmm. So we did approach her for some advice, but I guess, yeah, it was trial and error and we just had to dive head first in. And the biggest thing was understanding the heat and how it affects, you know, certain flowers will come on a lot sooner because it's the warmer weather or... And that's another factor, the weather. And we also didn't know what pests, what bugs and that were going to come. And it was my first time growing all of these flowers, except probably zinnias. So, yeah, it was definitely very um, a learning curve, but it's pretty exciting because we can take that knowledge and move on to next year and just build on it. And, yeah. And I don't know if you know, but it just gives inspiration to so many people not just in this region but further west too, I guess, that haven't probably thought that they could grow flowers in their garden, not as a commercial enterprise, but just, you know, for themselves. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm going to go, I've become very inspired <laughs> just being here and um, thinking about Paul Berry when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> so I had good. to laugh before when, when you said to me, um, oh, just... This is just the beginning, and I said to you, "Just go now. It's just the beginning because it's huge already." Yeah, it is. But I guess managing it better, and you know, over time, I'll add more to it. But that you come into a new section of problems of you know having enough water and having to put in you know like a new tank and maybe more taps to. We have a very high pressured watering system, so yeah, it's. It's hard trying to manage everything and so everything's watered and but anyway, we'll take one hurdle at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of the steps? Um, because I I know you have made it sound so easy, but I'm sure it wasn't. You know, you had to cart soil and so just talk me through the beginning how how you started it, um yeah, and, okay. and what you had to do to get it to where it is now. Well, initially, you know, you have to think about where are you going to grow it. So for me, where I've planted mine, it's on the north side of our house. But on the eastern side, there's my massive veggie garden. There's sheds, there's banana trees. All of that provides a source of wind protection, I guess, from the winds that come from the east. And we're lucky. There's lots of wildwood trees there. So there's a bit of dappled shade for certain varieties like ranunculus things that don't tolerate the heat as much and then from there yeah so I did a bit of research on what a good size bed is so mine are about 1.2 meters wide so that's ideal because you can still you know access reach over the row and access the whole row if you go any wider you're not going to be able to reach the ones in the middle Um, and I also wanted them wide enough they're probably overgrown a bit now, but so you, if you had a mower, you could run a mower up and down the rows. That would be ideal. Um, yeah, so the we got all our dirt from the cattle yards, as you would know. Mm. Um, so just transporting that up and we used a bobcat and made the mounds high enough because our soil here, it's self-mulching. So over time, yeah, we're going to have to come in and pop that up with more soil. Um, but yeah, I guess the idea is we quite often leave our wieners in the same yard every year when we feed wieners, so they are making the next, you know, round of cow manure to be brought in. So it'll be hot when we get it, and we'll have to let it sit for probably three to six months, I guess. 
So all that soil, the bacteria in that soil, it'll um, get really hot and break down a lot of the um, debris in the soil, I guess. And then, yeah, then you can put it out and um, sometimes it is good when you get a bit of a wet, bit of rain or a wet season because you get a lot of those seeds to sprout initially. And yeah, from there I just went in and put in a lot of steel pickets. So that holds up with flower netting to support a lot of the plants, um, especially when you get heavy winds, the taller varieties, they can fall over. Um, I've just used a single layer, but a lot of growers, they will use two layers. Um, and yeah, then a 30% white or beige shade cloth is really good because it lets enough sunlight through to the plants still, but it's protecting them from, you know, the hotter sun and our climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so and how... Like it, it, it's still very much in its infancy, and that you've already earned a pretty strong reputation around this local area. But how difficult was it for you to get into that commercial flower market? Where do you see that heading in the future? Well, it's a bit of a balancing act because I've got young children as well, so I want it just to be manageable. You know, I do my groceries in town once a week, so. I'll um, try and just take in as many bouquets as I can. Some weeks I'm busier and maybe I can't always run them in, but I try my best. I don't like training people away and I also don't like using too much greenery. I believe in buying a bouquet or bucket of solely flowers because that's one thing in the past going to florists that, you know, I prefer more flowers. I think that's what people want. And we yeah, I guess after doing the wedding, we got a large influx of interest and then Twin Hills, the local, you know, races, they were really helpful. And from there, we had several parties, 18th, 21st, that we supplied flowers for and word of mouth just gets around and it's wonderful. I love meeting all the people and yeah, a lot of them want to come out and visit and have a look for themselves. and. My biggest aim is to try and get more people growing dahlias in this region because it's very limited. Not many people do, but they actually do quite well in our climate, which people don't really know and think, yeah. Um, and then uh, we were talking before about, um, or you mentioned about, you know, how you had little kids and you just to get out of the house. So from a mental health perspective, what does gardening do for you? I think it's just a reset for the soul just going out there and to nurture something is to nurture your own soul and um, just the beauty of the flowers and the certain scented varieties that just I've had that many customers say to me oh my car just smells amazing it, even husbands picking up flowers like I think that's pretty awesome and my favourite thing was doing the Anzac Reef for Anzac Day because, yeah, it was something of such great significance and to support our local school for that was wonderful. And, yeah, I look forward to doing more workshops and that aspect of making wreaths and, you know, flower crowns or whatever people would like. Yeah. I mean, it is so good for your soul. It sort of fills you, doesn't it? And, it does, yeah. And, um, you know, you were saying um, earlier how whimsical it looks, especially yeah. when, you know, things that in full flower and it's so good for you, isn't it? And, and yeah. it's, it's inspirational and and I guess too, it makes you want to get outside and exercise, you know, in the garden. Yeah. You know, because that gardening brings yes. a lot of movement, doesn't it? And yeah, they say the happiest people in the world yeah. are people who work with the soil, so farmers and rather than, you know, do lawyers or doctors who sit in an office all day and like you said they sit in a room with no windows a lot of them yeah maybe there's a few that last many years in that job but i think yeah the happiest people are definitely the ones in the regional areas yeah um and anna when you're doing flowers for like, you did twin hills and you did a wedding yes. um and you know you said about the anzac day week do you put a lot of pressure on yourself at, when you're doing such big things like that that are so important to get it yes. right? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yep. I'm a bit of a perfectionist and 
um, it's probably not so much providing the flowers, but when you have to artistically create something and yeah, you just hope that people, you know, appreciate the same, like you, you hope that you're creating what they want to, what they envision, I guess. So you just hope that they like it and go along with it. But I guess flowers are good because they make anything look good. So <laughs> I've got a funny story about that. Actually, I um, was chatting with a friend of mine the other day and her daughter was getting married and the wedding cake didn't turn out. She said it was just so ugly. <laughs> and it was, you know, the 11th hour and yeah. she said, I raced into this forest. They were about to shut their door and yeah. I put my foot in the door. I said, I need help. Oh, and no. they covered this awful wedding cake with fresh flowers and it ended up looking absolutely beautiful so okay. they can do anything they, they can. can make anything look good yeah, yeah. definitely yeah That's they are good on case <laughs> yeah. and um like there's nothing like having flowers in the house it's just flowers and candles they're some of my favorite things and even if there's you know you haven't had time to clean your house and there's dust everywhere if you've got a few flowers and candles burning it's just makes you feel so special it does yeah yep, it definitely takes your house to the next level <laughs> yeah um we were talking before about imposter syndrome and i said you know i experienced it and probably still do um but but you said the same thing so tell me about your experience with that and how you get through yeah you know not having a formal <coughs> floristry um degree I guess or any professional training you're always asking yourself whether you know what you're doing is measuring up to people that are professional in the industry you know that have been doing it a long time and I guess as with anything the longer you do it the better you get and um, we are critical of ourselves but now that I know I can do it and they all learned and they all thrive so I feel like you can do anything I guess um, a lot of cold climate flowers that I was told that wouldn't grow here, they've done fine. So yeah, you just gotta have to go. And in it. Um, how important has Bill support been to, you know, from the physical support to the, you know, emotional support, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it without him. He's a great support and even like Dilly's parents, they, you know, help me. Sometimes they run flowers in for me or, um, he helps me if I have any water issues or he does, you know, a lot more manual kind of stuff and emotionally he's, yeah, very supportive and he goes out of his way to help me with the kids or, yeah, fantastic. I think you really need someone to support you otherwise, yeah, you couldn't do it alone. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know I'm keen to wrap it up and get home so I can get into my garden. <laughs> thank you so much. It's just thank you for the, such a beautiful day. And thank you so me. much for coming. Oh, it's lovely. It's perfect. So very good. Thank you for watching and listening to my interview. If you'd like to hear more inspiring stories, subscribe to my YouTube channel or my podcast and follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Life Journey. TV.